John Carpenter is my favorite director. Having said that, there's a couple movies I still haven't seen of his, and one of them is Vampires. So we're gonna review it. Let's go. John Carpenter's Vampire stars James Woods, Cheryl Lee, Thomas Ian Griffith, Daniel Baldwin, and is directed by John Carpenter. Damn, it feels good to be reviewing a John Carpenter movie because the guy is very patient. You know, if you track his career, yeah, there was a, a period where he was pumping out movies, you know, year after year. But as he got older, the span of time lengthened quite a bit to where you might not see a John Carpenter movie for a decade. You know, or maybe even two decades. I don't know. Like the ward, what was the distance between the ward and the movie before the ward? It might have been 15 years. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll probably end up putting it right down here. Okay. Cause I just, I just didn't look it up. Technically I watched some of vampires. I don't know if I watched the whole movie and this was back maybe in the early 2000s. And I just, I don't remember guys. I don't remember if I lost interest in the movie. Um, I just remember some images from the movie. So maybe I just wasn't really paying attention because when I watched it this time, didn't remember a lick of it. And I definitely didn't remember Thomas Ian Griffith playing Volek. And that's interesting because we just, you know, got off that high of Cobra Kai season four. Was it season four? And it was nice to have him back. But now it's hard not to see him as Silver. What was his first name? Silver? Tony Silver? I can't remember. Terry Silver. That's it. Terry Silver. I looked it up. Now, first off, before we dig deep, I want to dedicate this to uh, Frank and Darren from the Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast. Guys, if you haven't checked out that podcast, these guys know their shit when it comes to horror. They're also just really, really awesome dudes. I'll put a card here uh, directly to their channel so you can check it out. But uh, yeah, wanted to dedicate this review to both of them. They're just awesome dudes. The Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast, which is one of the coolest podcast names I think I've ever heard in my entire life. But let's press on. Now, first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis for John Carpenter's Vampires. Our main character is Jack Crow, played by James Woods. I literally laughed out loud when I first heard that his name was Jack Crow. It just sounds like, uh, like a graphic novel type character, but it, it, it was still... Kind of funny, but I guess it suits the character. But he is pretty much a bounty hunter. He has a deal with the Catholic Church and he hunts vampires. Funny enough, this movie came out the same year as Blade in 1998. And there's actually a lot of similarities between that movie and this. You know, Jack Crow is a vampire hunter like Blade is. There is a female character in the movie that is turning into a vampire throughout. They even have the same actor, Tim Guinea, playing you know a different part in uh, both movies. But, you know, it's business as usual. I like how when he kills the vampires, they have this whole setup. They pull the vampires out of the house. The way they explode is interesting because it looks like they have these flares built into their forearms. And then they just kind of explode. But I appreciate that because it's practical. And this was uh, the late 90s. So there was some CGI floating around. As a matter of fact, in Blade, there's plenty of bad CGI. So I'm thankful that he didn't rely on CGI for this movie. But along comes our main antagonist, Valak, again, played by Thomas Ian Griffith, who does a decent job in this because they don't give him too many lines. I think he literally has like maybe under 20 lines out of this whole movie. And that just makes him more menacing. I think visually he looks creepy as hell. You know, when I watch vampire movies, I like there to be like, uh, you know, big fangs and a lot of blood. And you definitely get that in this. And this guy is no joke. I mean, he freaking cooks fools, cleans house, and he is like one of the first vampires. He might be the first vampire. He dates back to the 1300s. Balak is the original, the source of the disease. The first vampire created by the Catholic Church. By accident. Shut the fuck up. And he was a priest that, I guess, went against the church and they exorcised him, you know, killed him. And so uh, he became a vampire which there's a little bit of a gray area in there. This movie was based off of two different scripts or novels, and they just kind of combined elements from the two. But I think maybe that got them into a little bit of trouble because I still have a question about how he died and then just kind of came back as a vampire. But also, there's this character named Catherine, played by Cheryl Lee. You might know her from Twin Peaks. But she is this mesmerizing character that gets bitten graphically and sexually by Valak, 
uh, kind of reminded me of Once Bitten, which I got the VHS back there, uh, how um, in Once Bitten, Lauren Hutton, she bites uh, Jim Carrey's character between the legs. Well, I guess that's how they get it done here, too. Uh, Valak bites her between the legs. And so throughout the rest of the movie, she is slowly turning into a vampire. This really reminded me of like Return of the Living Dead Part 3, how uh, Julie, I think her name was, was slowly turning into a zombie throughout the movie. Same thing here. Now, Jack Crow has this crew, you know, uh, it's, it's a bounty hunter crew. And one of his main sidekicks is Montoya, played by Daniel Baldwin, which funny enough, his brother Alec Baldwin was in talks to be in this movie. He might have even been in talks to be Jack Crow, actually, but didn't pan out. But somehow, Daniel Baldwin ends up getting a part in the movie. And you know what? He's pretty damn good. I liked him. He looks and sounds just like Alec, but I don't want to call him discount Alec Baldwin. That's a very famous family. You know, I don't know if a lot of my younger viewers remember this, but like back in the 90s, there was a term for a really good looking guy. It was called a Baldwin. And you know, you had all four of those brothers that were all, uh, they looked like models back then. And so they were highly sought after back in the day. And it's funny that there were four of them. What was my point again? But somewhere along the movie too, Montoya gets bitten by Catherine. You know, I like this character, Catherine, because you can't trust her along the way just because of her affliction. She's been bitten by a vampire. So, you know, you can't trust her. She can't trust herself. She, you know, she has the best intentions, but slowly but surely she's starting to uh, crave the taste of blood. And there's kind of a little love story here because the two of them, her and Montoya, you know, he's kind of smitten for her. Okay, this is Carpenter's highest grossing opening weekend movie out of his entire catalog at $9.1 million opening weekend. That shocked the hell out of me. As a matter of fact, Carpenter was kind of in a drought for a while there. He was getting bad reviews on a lot of his previous movies and he thought about giving up the game. You know, because eventually you feel so beaten down that you're like, screw it. Um, but this movie actually gave him a little boost, a little bit more gusto, a little bit more mojo and uh, to get back in the game. Although I don't think he put out too many more movies after Vampires anyway. But I would say this is probably one of his last really good movies. It definitely has that Carpenter uh, vibe all the way through. Yes, he did the score. Um, I like to say there's um, like 70s, you know, 80s Carpenter, and then there's the 90s Carpenter where there's a little bit of a different vibe. Maybe it's a little bit more mature. Maybe he's taking advantage of the technology a little bit more. I definitely prefer the older style with, you know, like Halloween and the fog, Escape from New York. But there's some fun to be had with like the late 80s and 90s Carpenter as well with, you know, like They Live and Vampires. Now, jumping into the characters, uh, James Woods, he was way, way, way down the list to play Jack Crow. There were probably you know, a dozen big Hollywood actors, including Kurt Russell, that were in talks to play Jack Crow. And Kurt Russell couldn't do it because he was tied up uh, with other obligations. I'm a James Woods fan, actually. Uh, there's a movie he did called True Believer that nobody, it seems like nobody's ever seen, nobody ever talks about. He plays a lawyer. Guy does a fantastic job in that movie. Also, Casino, he plays just this really dirtbag boyfriend that just constantly lies to Sharon Stone throughout the movie. And he really stuck out throughout the entire movie. And he really kind of steals the show uh, in the scenes that he's in. Casino is one of my all-time favorite films, okay? I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I love, you know, really good gangster movies like Scorsese. But, you know, James Wood, he's a great character actor. He can pretty much do anything. Forget whatever you've seen in the movies. They don't turn into bats. Crosses don't work. Garlic? When I try garlic, you stand there with garlic around your neck. One of these buggers will bend you fucking over and take a walk up your strata chocolata while he's sucking the blood out of your neck, all right? I think he does a serviceable job here. I don't think he is like the most amazing leading man in this. I think he stumbles a bit with some of the lines and that could be, you know, this, the dialogue itself. I know that behind the scenes, he got along with Carpenter quite well and Carpenter made a deal with him, said, you, you read the lines that are on the script and then I'll let you do a take just, you know, ad-libbing, doing whatever you want because he's that type of actor. And I think more times than not, Carpenter ended up using some of James Wood's own dialogue that he wrote. And don't get me wrong, I like his performance. There's some standout lines, standout moments with the character. I just don't think they like drive it home like say a Snake Plissken or somebody like that. Now the character Catherine played by Cheryl Lee freaking steals the movie. She literally steals the movie. 
She's so good, and let me tell you why I think she's so good, is because she doesn't really have that much dialogue, but her character seems to be, you know, afflicted the most. You know, she's going through this, like, transformation, this metamorphosis. So a lot of the acting she does is with her body, with her, more importantly, her facial expressions. And man, some of these moments that she has in this movie are downright chilling, and you can just read so much into that performance. Like, this is acting. This is what separates the, the men from the boys or the ladies from the, from the girls. Because, man, I was just fascinated with her performance throughout. And that was just a nice surprise that I didn't expect going into this movie. You know, I'm here for the Carpenter of it all. You know, I'm just such a huge Carpenter fan. Carpenter himself is, is really like a, an economic, no bullshit type of director. That's just his personality. And you can kind of read that in his movies. You know, he gets to the point. He doesn't mess around with any flashiness or anything. And that's part of his charm. It's part of what I love about him. So having a character like her to kind of sprinkle some icing, I guess, over Carpenter's direction just made the movie that much better. Because I can't foot stomp it enough. I think she's brilliant in this. And I don't hear people talking about her performance that much. By the way, gas is $1.21 a gallon in this movie okay i saw that and i cried a little bit so i did pause i cried for like five minutes and then i uh i continued the movie also carpenter wanted this to have more of a western vibe to kind of set it apart from other vampire movies because there's a lot of vampire movies out there uh the only other one that i can think of that has kind of a western vibe is near dark so i guess that would be a good double feature with this movie uh there's one scene where you have the vampires literally coming out of the ground in the in the dirt and behind the scenes that was a really tough scene to shoot because they literally had to have straws coming out of the the actors mouths and a lot of times they had to cut because they were suffocating but you got to do what you got to do to get the scene right and also speaking of gas there you know at the gas station the uh the customer is frank darabont who directed uh shawshank redemption and he his car is stolen by montoya what a dick now, if you're looking for vampire violence, this is your movie. And it's not like completely riddled with violence, but when it needs to be there, it's there. And there's a couple of sequences that are just amazing. Like uh, there's this party in the beginning of the movie that's going on. It's almost like an orgy, I guess. And Valak comes in and man, right away he like... Sticks his hand right through this guy and then rips up, kind of like, you know, Jason goes to hell and, and rips his body in half. And there's just plenty of, like, great blood in that scene. There's decapitations throughout the movie. There's some really fun moments where, you know, the, uh, the bounty hunters, they are going against the vampires, you know, sneak attacking them. And plenty of good action and blood in that scene. So this is kind of like an action-horror hybrid. And as far as any cons for this movie, I would say... Some might think that there's a little bit of a slow burn feel to it in the middle. I don't think so, just because I was really getting invested in the characters, especially like Catherine. So for me, I like that stuff. There is one really funny scene where you got like Jack Crow hanging from a cross and Montoya like shoots an arrow to the top of the cross. And when he comes by, I mean, that cross gets slammed to the ground. faster than you can blink and i guarantee you uh jack would have been toast okay there's no way in hell he would have lived through that but hey it's a vampire movie so who cares right but it, i like the scene because it's funny as hell <laughs> so overall guys super high purchase worthy for john carpenter's vampires this is a really good one i still need to see one or two of his other movies definitely assault on precinct 13 i haven't seen that one yet i have the blu-ray um but i think i've seen just but i actually haven't seen elvis either which would be a weird one to include in there i watched uh someone's watching me last year which is an interesting movie because it takes place in a high rise and the original idea or one of the ideas floating around for halloween 2 was for laurie strode to be in a high rise building so this is kind of that premise i'm going to review that movie uh, down the line too but yeah once i get all those watts then i'll do a carpenter ranking because a lot of you guys have asked me to do a carpenter ranking so i will so anyway, let me know your thoughts on John Carpenter's vampires in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Hey, you can get a Killer Flicks t-shirt uh, if you want. I think I still have a link down there. I don't really uh, like promote my t-shirts anymore. I, they exist, okay? 
Follow me at Drum Dums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. And anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum Dumb out.